Now we're going to do some exam style questions on metal aqua ions. We can start with this question which we've already done in the first video. So when anhydrous aluminium chloride, which is AlCl3, reacts with water, we form solution Y which contains a complex ion. And we're going to produce three chloride ions. Remember, hexa-aqua ions are formed when you put salt of transition metals in water and also some other metals like aluminium. And these are the state symbols. In part B, complex ion Z is going to act as a bronsted Lowry acid when it's reacting with water. So this is complex Z. It's going to react with water, so it's going to lose a hydrogen and water is going to gain the hydrogen. That means aluminium initially had six water molecules, now it's going to have five and one hydroxide. So we can see that aluminium is acting as an acid and water is the base. Okay, part C. Describe two observations you would make when excess sodium carbonate is added to solution Y. Now remember, solution Y is the solution that contains aluminium hexa-aqua ion. So to answer this, we're going to look at our table. Right now we have this, this is solution Y. We're going to add sodium carbonate. So now we can see that this will be the observation. We're going to form a white precipitate and also carbon dioxide. So observation one, a white solid precipitate is formed and effervescence bubbling because of carbon dioxide. The equation is going to be mainly this with carbonate. Sodium is a spectator ion, so we don't need to add it to the equation. And we get the following products. So our solid precipitate, carbon dioxide, and water. And don't forget to balance it. Part D. Aqueous potassium hydroxide is added until in excess to solution Y. Describe two observations for this. Again, solution Y is this. Potassium hydroxide is going to give us hydroxide ions. And we're going to keep adding it until in excess. So, again, we're going to start with this. When we add a bit of hydroxide, it's going to form a white precipitate. But then, when we add excess hydroxide, it's going to redissolve and give us a colorless solution. So, observation one, we're going to form a white precipitate. And the equation for the first reaction is going to be this, forming the precipitate and water. The second observation happens when hydroxide becomes excess. Then the precipitate dissolves, or you can say we form a colorless solution. So now the reactant here is the product from the previous reaction. It's going to react with more hydroxide and form the following compound. Okay, next question. The following tests were carried out to identify a unknown green salt Y. So green salt, let's have a look at our table. What's green? We can see green appears a lot when we have iron two. So this green salt is a salt. It's not a hexa ion. That means it's got iron two plus bonded to a negative ion. We're not sure what the negative ion is right now. So the first thing we do is we dissolve this in water, an aqueous solution of Y. So that means when you dissolve it in water, the iron is going to form a hexa-aqua ion and the negative part will be left on its own. This is now the solution of Y. This reacts with silver nitrate and forms a cream precipitate. Now we know that when you have silver ions, the only time it forms a cream precipitate is when it reacts with bromide ions, forming AGBR. And this is supposed to be compound A. And it says here that compound A gave a colorless solution when reacted with concentrated ammonia. And we know this is true for silver bromide. When you add concentrated ammonia, it will dissolve. So that means compound A is silver bromide. And the state symbol will be solid because it's a precipitate. Okay, moving on to the next line. Another aqueous solution of Y. So this again forms a green precipitate. 
when reacted with sodium carbonate. So if we look at our table one more time, we can see that our green solution is the ion 2 plus hexa aqua ion. This forms a green precipitate when it reacts with carbonate ions. That means the green precipitate must be iron carbonate. Okay, next part. The green precipitate was reacted with sulfuric acid. This gave us a solution and a colorless gas. We know that if you take any carbonate and react it with an acid, such as sulfuric acid in this case, we're going to get a salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. So that means the salt produced must be iron sulfate and the colorless gas is going to be carbon dioxide. And finally, the identity of Y, the green salt that we had in the beginning, must be Fe2 plus Br. So it's going to be FeBr2. Okay, write the simplest ionic equation between the reaction of silver nitrate and the anion. Silver nitrate is AgNO3, and we know the anion was Br minus. This is what we worked out. So, when that reacts with bromide, we're going to get the following, silver bromide and nitrate. All that happened is bromide took the place of the nitrate ion. These are the state symbols. Since we want to write an ionic equation, we have to break down all the ionic compounds. So starting with the left, we can break this down into silver plus and NO3 minus. Moving on, bromide stays as it is, it's already an ion. Silver bromide is a solid, so we don't break it down, and nitrate stays as it is because it's an ion. Then we look for what appears on both sides, and we can see that nitrate appears on both sides, so we cancel it out. And this is the final equation. Part C. Write the simplest ionic equation for the reaction that occurs between green precipitate, B, which was iron carbonate, and sulfuric acid. Okay, so iron carbonate and sulfuric acid gave us iron sulfate, carbon dioxide, and water. Again, we're going to break down the aqueous ions. So iron carbonate stays as it is because it's a solid. Sulfuric acid gives us 2H plus SO4 minus 2. On the right, iron sulfate breaks down into iron 2 plus and SO4 minus 2. Carbon dioxide stays as it is because it's a gas and water stays as a liquid. Cancelling out what appears on both sides, so in this case sulfate, and we're left with the following. If you've done it correctly, you should notice that the overall charge on both sides is the same. So here we can see on both sides the overall charge is 2+. plus. Also in the top one, on both sides the overall charge was the same as well. In this case it was 0 on both sides. Okay, let's finish off with some multiple choice questions. What forms when a solution of sodium carbonate is added to a solution of gallium nitrate? Now you might be thinking, hold on, we haven't learned about gallium. Well, don't worry, you don't have to know about all the different metals. Here we have a three plus metal reacting with sodium carbonate. So as long as we remember that three plus metals react differently than two plus with carbonate, we should be fine. So when we look at our table, comparing the 3 plus metals, for example, iron 3 plus and aluminium 3 plus, when they react with sodium carbonate, they form precipitates which have three hydroxides and also they release carbon dioxide gas. When 2 plus metals react, they form precipitates which are carbonates and no gas is produced, meaning you won't see any bubbles. So A is not correct. Number one, because it's a carbonate, and we said that they form hydroxides. Number two, there's no bubbles. B, a white precipitate of gallium hydroxide. So this is the correct precipitate. However, there's no bubbles produced. C says white precipitate of gallium carbonate. Again, it should be a hydroxide precipitate, not a carbonate with three plus, and bubbles, which is correct. That means the answer must be D a white precipitate of gallium hydroxide and bubbles of carbon dioxide. Okay, moving on to the next question. What is the final species produced when excess aqueous ammonia is added to aqueous aluminium chloride? As soon as you have aqueous aluminium chloride, 
That means the aluminium will form a hexa aqua ion and the chloride ions will be released to dissolve by themselves. So that means we have an aluminium hexa aqua ion. So, aluminium hexa aqua ion is a colorless solution. When we add a bit of ammonia, we form a white precipitate. When we add excess ammonia, there's no further change, meaning we stay with that white precipitate. And that will be the final species. So that means the answer will be this one. Okay, final question. What compound gives a colorless solution when excess of dilute aqueous ammonia is added? Okay, now this is an interesting question. The reason it's interesting is because sometimes you might be in the mode of answering hexa aqua ion questions that you try to think of every possible combination of compounds and colors. However, we know this is something from first year AS. Remember, when you have silver chloride, silver bromide and silver iodide, they form white, cream and yellow precipitates. When you add dilute ammonia to silver chloride, it will dissolve. If you add concentrate ammonia to silver bromide, it will dissolve. And silver iodide will never dissolve. So the question says we have dilute ammonia. That means silver chloride should dissolve in it and form a colorless solution. So the trick to this question is learning about hexa aqua ions, but at the same time remembering to recall information from previous topics that you already learnt. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.